Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's kind of a deceiving title because it says restretching carpet. However, I did restretch carpet and I just kind of want to walk through and show you what we did. Uh, I did get some footage here, so I will be able to actually show you, show you what I did and how I patched it up around the vents and stuff like that. So let me get uh, a view right here and let everybody see what's going on here. Um, so we got this whole kitchen, I mean, whole living room here has yet to be stretched you can see all the wrinkles right through there how's it going well this entire house was like that um after i finish the kitchen i'll be able to get all this stove and refrigerator and stuff like that back in there right there's jerry hill now spreading some goo there so as soon as we get that going on uh we'll be able to uh like i said get this stuff out of here and restretch this living room so uh what we did uh, like I said, the whole house is like that. Uh, this hallway, I pulled it up from down there on the length and I kicked it that direction. All the wrinkles were running this way in the house. So after I kicked the hallway that way to snug it up, I stretched this bedroom this way, bumped all this back and stretched it that way. I had to stretch both ways because it was kind of loose. I wasn't satisfied just was stretching the one way and getting the wrinkles out because I could just take my hand and push that way and still push up a wrinkle. Even though there wasn't any wrinkles, I still stretched them both ways. Uh, how's it going, Josh? I still stretched them both ways anyway, just for the sake of getting them all snug. There's gonna be a carpet cleaner come in after we're done. Um, you can still see uh, what looks like a wrinkle right here. There's actually a few of them. I guess all you guys know that it's actually uh, where the carpet was wore like that. Uh, but anyway, I'll just run over this really quick. So, and by the way, I got vents on every side of the room right here where I was stretching to. So I had to patch in around all of those. What I meant to say was nothing I love more, more than coming home from doing a flooring to watch videos about flooring. <laughs> I hear you. So I went this way and then I pulled that room there that way and that way and then I took this room that way and that way so I'll come down here and show you in just a second here uh, uh, exactly what I'm talking about so uh, like I said I stretched probably two or three inches in this room in all these rooms it was really really loose so looking right here at the vent you can see that see the vent here it's all dirty around it and everything just because it's a it's a really old vent and you get soot and stuff like that from the vent. So um, this whole piece right here stretched out that way because I literally stretched the whole thing, whole width right there, okay? So I took the piece that actually cut out that stretched way up the wall and just cut it off, scooted it back and seamed it right back on there with my uh, cool glide iron. You can see, uh, oops, sorry about that. Yeah, there, you see the tape underneath right there? and right under there anyway i don't want to pull too hard on that but i've done that i had to do that in all three rooms so and there was a whole bunch of wrinkles you can actually see right here those are not wrinkles that's where it was wore again there was the wrinkles all in this hallway so when i pulled that room that way and pulled this room that way it pulled these wrinkles out of the closet i mean out of the hallway all nice and tight again we had to do stretch this way in this room bump it back that way stretch that way we did stretch two ways in all of these rooms and again i had to patch the far side of the vent right there <sighs> thank you my wager i appreciate it buddy been uh pulling some just trying to get uh the groove back uh, going and everything like that with jerry working with me and everything you can see how many wrinkles there was right here in this carpet. There was like a whole bunch. It looked like the living room. This whole house looked like it did in the living room. Uh, again, these are not wrinkles. These are where the wrinkles were. Look here. Nice and tight carpet right there. Uh, we stretched once again that way, kicked it this way, and stretched that way. So uh, a lot of times you don't have to stretch, and again, uh pieced it over there on the other side of the vent so again a lot of times you don't have to stretch there's you can see where there was a wrinkle there you don't have to stretch both ways a lot of times uh a lot of times you can just stretch the way that it 
the way that it was going. Oh, and also, we have done this vinyl here today. Turn around here, get some light on the subject. So we've done the kitchen and two bathrooms today. We've done this today, little bathroom. It's a rental property, uh, so it's not the best looking stuff. They use their old quarter round and stuff like that. So, shmeh, shmeh. Anyway, we did that bathroom. Um, this bathroom, still, uh, they didn't have no trim in here because they did some floor repair in here. So, I guess they'll be taking care of that, or we'll have to do it later today. They didn't have to commode up floor repair done and stuff like that so we just come in and installed and again this is a uh, over chipboard nobody ever anytime i restretch carpet i stretch both ways no matter what that's awesome uh, <clears throat> uh nobody around here wants to pay for underlayment or anything like that so the floor prep is always real extravagant just to get a halfway good halfway good surface this is uh like i said this is over a chipboard, but I went over it with two, co two coats of mud. Got it fairly smooth. You can tell by the way the, you can tell by the way the glue is spreading there that it's nice and smooth. It ain't got a bunch of deep spots in it where there's uh, divots and stuff like that. So it t turns out pretty nice. It just takes a long time to prep. So we done like I said, two coats on this, two coats in the bathroom, and then the other one back there. We actually only had to do one coat on that because we went over an existing glue down vinyl so we only had to do one coat of mud over that just to skim over the uh floor so the grout lines and stuff like that wouldn't telegraph through so and uh after we do this right here we will take this that way and i'll have to piece up over here on these vents as well and uh using that cool glide iron there is super simple uh to do to do that you can literally get your piece in there and get it all ready just like you want it and then just zap it on one end zap it on this end zap it on that end and boom you're done it is super fast this is the first time jerry ever seen uh the cool glide use he was like oh you're already done because i wanted to see it i said well i got another one over here and he came in there and looked at it and he's like uh how's the knee uh my knee is fine i don't know exactly what you're talking about might be talking about my hand uh i actually talked to jerry uh, yes, yesterday or the day before about it, I was like, uh, since you're back working with me, I'm going to be getting uh, surgery scheduled and get my hand fixed. So I was wanting to do that while Isaac was working with me, but uh, he ended up quitting before I could get it done. So while he's working with me, Jerry will be with me for probably for the rest of my life. But anyway, hopefully anyway. And so for the rest of my career anyway, I got this young man right over here, right there, Mr. J. Luke. Is going to be with me for a long time until he knows enough to go out on his own. He's going to get some tools and start working for himself. That is his goal. I'm going to try to teach him up the best I can and get him going on his own. Uh, any update on these shark teeth? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, are you the one that sent me your address and stuff? If so, I'm going to send you some as soon as I place another order. I ain't. And uh, I'll just uh, let you pay me through PayPal or something like that, okay? I haven't actually looked at them to see how much it cost yet but i'm just gonna i'll send you some then i'll screenshot the invoice or something like that and send it to you okay but anyway got some really good helpers help i won't say helpers got some really good apprentices right now how's that is that better <laughs> uh jerry and luke over there so we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna rule this town starting this year next year we're taking over <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm just being silly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Jerry said he never seen a cool glide work before. So when I was in there fixing those vents, he's like, oh, man, that was fast. Because it was just like literally, you guys know, probably uh, five seconds or six seconds per end on that. And it was done. So it's definitely a good investment if you guys don't have one. It's awesome for patching, stuff like that. So uh, anyway. I ain't got a whole lot to say. I just wanted to get on here and show you guys kind of how I did this restretch with this type of layout. And like I said, I do got some footage on it to show the actual stretching and kicking and how to deal with this closet over here and stuff like that. So we had this closet right here, which was right in the way where we stretched right there. So 
talking about that and how to do it around that without having any issues with that and patching the vents up and stuff like that so uh as soon as i get a chance i will get that put together for you guys and uh monday or tuesday i am going to be taking off work and getting your stuff in the mail i've got like 99 percent of it boxed up with addresses and everything like that and i was planning on doing it today and i ended up having to work but monday or tuesday one of those two days i am taking off work and get your stuff in the mail okay and i apologize i've been like way too long on that so i'm sorry about that okay uh everything's been good jordan i hope your baby is doing well anyway uh yeah just wanted to shout out real quick on the restretch and stuff like that and then like i said i got some footage i'll put together on this job and we'll go from there okay oh yeah i got some super awesome ideas about uh uh tax strip and how you can feel the tax baby is going good thanks for asking awesome uh how about filling the pins through the tack strip? Looks like your floors are flexible. Go coast flooring. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. The vinyl is definitely flexible. It's it's that new style of vinyl. Luke, smash it down right there and show them. So yeah, that don't hurt that vinyl a bit. This vinyl is a really good vinyl. It's the it's the the new stuff. How's it going? Uh, Brandon from Michigan. Uh, would love to try a cool glide and get rid of the smelly, messy, traditional seam tape and iron. Uh, it's really good. I, uh, I use it every single time I do a seam now, and that's strictly because I want to get used to it. If you'll talk to other people that have a cool glide, they'll tell you that they don't use it all the time. They only use it on specialty carpets or uh, pattern matches and... Uh, uh, patches and stuff like that so however i do use it on every single seam now and that is because i want to get really i want to be able to just be really really comfortable with it uh what do you think about pack out toolboxes pack out toolboxes i don't know what you mean by that um but yeah i'm using it on every single seam now until i get really really comfortable with it and, and then i'll go back to my traditional iron how's it going tito um like i said i just want to use it enough to where i'm really comfortable with it and then i'll switch back stackable toolboxes oh i don't have a clue jordan because i never i never ever use a toolbox i've had a tool bucket look at here it's a wreck right now because i was digging stuff out can you do a video on that cool glide tutorial i absolutely will just like i said just as soon as i get comfortable with it i already did a video on it and uh, yeah, I got the, I use the seamer down now as well, and it's a great, great combo. I think it's a really good tool, and it is definitely worth the money, especially for people that do repairs and stuff like that. If you ask me, it's worth the money anyway, because you can, uh, not that I had issues with seams and stuff like that, but it's just super convenient to be able to stop and start a seam anytime you want to. If you forget something, if you want to get up and go do this, I want to see your work truck, okay. Let me turn around here. I've already did a, a tutorial on my whole van one time. Uh, right here, look here. So this is my tool bucket. I got a tool buddy on it. My, like I said, my tools are scattered because I was, this is the first carpet job we've had since Jerry's been back. And uh, so a lot of my stair tools, carpet tools and stuff like that was on the bottom of the bucket. So that's why it's a mess like that. I got all my tools out right there. So let's go out and take a look at the van. Somebody wanted to see the carpet van? I actually got a uh, vlogging. I actually got a uh, Ford E250, and like I said, I did a whole video on it, talking about my shelving, uh, everything I got set up, because I built my shelves specifically for everything that I haul on my van all the time, which a lot of that stuff has changed since I've been here in Tennessee, because I hardly do carpet anymore. This is uh, just a handful of carpet jobs. And this literally ain't even a carpet job. This is just a restretch. So I've only done a handful of carpet jobs since I've been here. So a lot of the stuff that I used to use, I'm not using it anymore. I do um, mostly solid surface, whether it be vinyl plank, hardwood, laminate, or something like that. So these are all the shelves that I built in here whenever I got the van. And you can see I got a space here for my stretchers, which that's my old set. I now have a Roberts set. But I built my little... Uh, 
racks right here for my straight edges so they can sit in there. They're actually nice and snug. Right there's one I keep my three foot straight edge in. They're just two boards and I left like a, a, a quarter inch or something like that in there and then I just put some really cheap carpet in there to make it nice and snug. You see the carpet right, right there. So that's what I got on both sides, that side and that side. And everything that I use, which I talked about last time, my seam iron, seamer down now is right here. You can't hardly see it because it's dark. My kicker right here. And uh, straight edges, stretchers are always by the back door. Everything that I come and grab on a regular basis, I always keep really accessible right here where I can grab it real easily. Okay, get home before it's dark. Yeah, it's dark, but I still got to finish that kitchen and restretch that living room. Uh, I use zip tie around straight edges. I hear you. Uh, this is the side door. It, I take my tack strip and stuff and stand up right there. My big roller goes right here. My vinyl roller goes right there behind it. And I got that bungee cord there. I put my roller in, then my tack strip up against that, and then I bungee it all, hook it on that eye thing right there. Um, I built me a little thing right there. You can see all my tubes of uh, caulking seam sealers and stuff like that that right there's a little first aid kit how do you like the tool bucket i love it jordan i've always had a tool bucket this right here is the only toolbox i've ever had uh, i got that roberts one i'm going to switch this one out for it so that one is a really old rusty one i keep uh putties um uh let's see oh putty stain stuff like that just stuff that i don't use all the time that i can keep it in there you know, I stain quarter round and stuff like that. Putty for wood jobs and laminate jobs and stuff like that. So, uh, my seam sealer uh, guns I keep right there in that DeWalt bag along with my seam sealer and glue sticks. There's a little miter box, a couple of my, uh, uh, let's see, I forgot what that was. Oh, the double XL strikers. Those things are absolutely awesome. There's another little random tap and block right there. Uh, speed square right back there. How's it going, Ferb 88? Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it. There's some cool glide tape right there. Like I said, it's a wreck right now. I haven't done anything. It's been a wreck ever since I moved here from Tucson. Uh, I used to have it really, really organized. I'd like to know how you move the appliances back across the vinyl floor. See that right there? See right there? Those are forearm forklift. Me and another guy can get on one side of the fridge, pick it straight up, and set it straight down. Hold on, look, let me show you. Right there, I have some. I have four spare vinyl plank, uh, click together vinyl planks. I will take the refrigerator in with those straps right there, set it down on those planks, roll it back in its hole, roll the refrigerator back in its hole, lean it over, pull one plank out, lean it to the other side, pull the other plank out. And the refrigerator never has to touch the vinyl floor at all until it is exactly where it belongs. If you want, whenever uh, uh, I move the refrigerator back, I'll be happy to video that and show how I move appliances and stuff. I might do that anyway, how I move appliances on vinyl floor. Because I got the stove and the refrigerator to do. And I'll just make a video of that tonight here in just a little bit whenever I put that stuff back. Okay? Because I've had a couple people ask about that. So that'll make... That'll... Uh, that'll do pretty good oh yeah uh you are man well thank you i appreciate that oh you the man uh um this right here you guys know that i always use latex on my doorways when i'm working up to tile or, or anything like that uh you're welcome thank you for watching i appreciate that and I'm, i hope it helps and i'm glad you enjoy it so i would go through this stuff like every couple months i would go through a gallon of this when i was in tucson this is the same jug, and it was open whenever I moved from Tucson. This is the same jug that I brought from Tucson, and it's about, uh, it's probably about half full right there. So if that gives you any kind of idea how much carpet I've done since I've been here, not much at all. As a matter of fact, it was a week and a half ago, or two weeks ago, that I actually finished off how many snakes have bit you. I ain't been bit by any snakes. Not even when I was out west. Out west, they say it's, oh, it's crazy for snakes and stuff like that. There's actually a lot more poisonous snakes here in the east than there are out west. 
So, uh, uh, let's see, what was I saying? Um, dang, I forgot what I was talking about. Snap. Can't remember what I was talking about. Hmm. Anyway, well, I think it's about time to get back out. Let me see if this glue's dried up. Look at here. Uh, LMO. Look here. Look what kind of help I got. Just sitting around not doing nothing. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Everything's completely done except for what we're working on right there. We can't do nothing because of the because of the waiting on the glue. So feel free, buddy. Have a break. Dang, I wish I could remember what I was talking about. Forgot. Um, a real worker sits down when they break. Yep, I heard that. Luke, I think somebody's saying you ain't a real worker because they said a real worker sits down when he works. You're laying around. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just playing. I know. I want to point that out right here. Check it out. Whenever you're taking a break at work and you want to rest, Pro Knee will be there for you. Look at that. Using his knee pads. How many dollars do you earn per hour? I don't work by the hour. He's the real deal. He said, he said you're the real deal, Luke. I don't work by the hour, so I don't have a clue what it averages out to be. I don't even figure stuff up like that at all. I, I work by the yard, uh, and that's it. Or square foot, square foot or the yard. How's it going, Ricky? Congratulations on your new job, buddy. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get off here. I'm just about done there. And like I said, whenever I, I move the appliances back, I'll get that on video and I'll put it together. I usually average about $100 an hour. That's, that's good, buddy. That's real good, actually. If you can do that every day of the week, you're done real good. I don't do that, I promise you. I wish I did. Back in the day, I did. I usually would average about 100 bucks an hour, close to it, 75 to 100 bucks an hour, somewhere like that, but I don't do it no more. Uh, you still wearing flip-flops? Absolutely, check them out. There's my little house shoes, my little flip-flops. My ninja boots, whatever you want to call them. Call them what you want, but they are the absolute most comfortable shoe, most comfortable shoe you will, you will ever slip your foot in if you buy some. Look at here. Hold on. Look here. Let me show you something. Let me show you something better than Crocs. You're absolutely right. Look at here. Look. What, what, what's he got on over there? Look at there. The comfort has rubbed off on Jesse Luke. Look at there. I got some black ones just like those. Cool, they're Quanzies. You know what I'm talking about then. A lot of people make fun of my shoes. A lot of people say they look cool because they look like ninja boots and stuff like that. By George, they are comfortable. I don't care what they look like. They would have to be like really soup. I mean, they're not the best looking shoes by no means, but they would have to be a lot worse than they are as far as looks for me not to wear them, for me to choose comfort over looks. I am about comfort. So I don't care what they look like. If they're comfortable, I'm gonna wear them by George. I don't care. And they feel good on top too, because uh, if you keep your shoes any amount of time at all, your shoe strings always wear out before your shoes do. So I usually, check it out, hold on. In my shoes, I will usually have a, like a knot tied over here on the side, or, or actually it's over here on this side. My shoe strings will break down here and I'll have me a little side knot tied right here and a side knot tied right here where they usually break twice before my shoe wears out. You don't wear these out. There ain't no shoe strings to wear out. Uh, I missed your comment there, Milo, man. Let me see here. Uh, they look great in black, just like a normal shoe. Uh, where do you buy them at? Ricky Howard, I got a, I actually did a video on them. If you search through my videos, I think it's called the best shoes for installers or something like that. And I got a link to them right there in that video where, where you can just link right up to them. And I buy them off Amazon and they're so comfortable and check this out. They're only 35 bucks. So you can't beat that. And they last, I wore Nike's. <clears throat> for years before I switched to these, Nick from Gold Coast Florida actually turned me on to these shoes. Whenever I went over there a couple summers ago, he let me try his on. I was like, dang, that's awesome. You don't have to break these in either. They already feel broken as soon as you buy them. They're already nice, soft, comfortable. They already feel like they've been worn for two years. <laughs> I wouldn't really know because I never keep a pair of shoes two years. I get about uh, three months out of a pair of shoes, and that's with Nikes or these or any other thing because they just wear out. Always wearing shoes out. Yep, you're exactly right. Uh, jeans or pants go in. Um, I missed it. Sorry about that. 
uh, yeah, shoes is like another uh, bill that you just kind of figure in with the rest of your bills because if you're a floor guy, you go through them really fast. So, or I do anyway. Uh, having lace come undone could be lethal. Yeah, I hear you. I would feel safe with them. That, yeah, I hear you. And they actually got the non-slip bottoms as well. I wear jogging pants or sweats. I could not do that and work. That, that would definitely be comfortable, but I couldn't do that and work. Uh, the elastic around the edge, uh, the elastic around the edge and stuff like that would just not work with my pouch. I have to have belt loops and stuff like that. I wear a side pouch right here. Look at here. Get down there. So there it is right there. My pouch. I wear it in my belt loops right there. And again, I uh, just have a pencil, an ink pen, and my carpet knife. And that's all I keep in my pouch ever because I like it nice and convenient. No, we're not going to work on that. Just as soon as we get this kitchen done, uh, what is the difference between a stripper and a magician? One's uh, cutting stunt and the other's a hmm. Okay. Uh, why ain't you wearing his, his you wearing his vest and hard hat? Uh, I, yeah, I don't wear a vest or a hard hat. Uh, shoes by FBSB. There you go, buddy. Uh, well, my glue is just about dry, so uh, use tough toe. I hear you. That's a good idea, Ricky. I, I didn't know if they worked on tennis shoes. I've seen them. Uh, oh, in Big D's where the carpet supply warehouse in Tucson, I've seen them. Is that, I think I know what you're talking about. I know uh, Better Tools makes a set of toes that goes on your boots and uh, the glue on there or something like that. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, jeans last real poorly. That's why I do not wear jeans. These that I got on are actually really cheap Walmart pants. You'll notice that most of my stuff is cheap that I wear to work, but I find what is comfortable. And these pants right here will outlast a pair of uh, jeans, probably five to one. I've had these pants ever since I moved here, so I've had them a year, and that's doing good. They don't even have a hole or anything in them anywhere yet. So my knees hold up really good in these. These are a little cheap. I want to say George's, I think. I don't know. They might be Wrangler. Anyway, I got them at Walmart, so they're not nothing expensive or fancy or nothing like that. They're just uh, regular pants. Uh, clean your tools before you go home. Cheap clothes work are best for work. They get ruined on jobs. Yep, I'm the same way. Only comfortable, uh, cheap work clothes. Yep, I hear you. There ain't no sense in working in $60 pants or $120 shoes or nothing like that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not down with that. I can find other ways to throw my money away if I want to besides doing that. Anyway, the glue is dry, so you guys take a look here. Hello. So there's still a few little white spots, but it's good enough. We are fixing to roll this vinyl over, glue the other side, and uh, go from there. And again, whenever I move these appliances back, since someone asked a while ago, I will have Jesse Luke video for me. Uh, do you go to church on Sunday? Yes, sir, I do. I go to church every Sunday morning and probably 90% of Wednesday nights. I try my best to make it on Wednesday nights as well. We only have church once on Sunday. We don't have it Sunday evening, just uh, Sunday morning. Epoxy. I got oh, I hear you. Is that? I know what you're talking about. I've seen some people like that on uh, Florian Installers of America. Thank you, Andrew. And I definitely won't take no offense to that since I am floors by Southern boys. You can call me boy all you want. <laughs> okay. Well, time to get at it. Uh, uh, no installers who don't let the glue tack up. Yeah, I do too. As a matter of fact, that guy right there, the guy he was working for in Missouri, he didn't let it tack up. He's like, what are you doing when he started laying it over? <laughs> so I always find it better to let it tack up. And then the only thing is, oh, sorry, I was sitting there pointing. Only thing is, when you get to right there, if you just roll your vinyl over, you notice how I got it rolled up all the way down that way. So if you just roll it over nice and easy, you're not going to get bubbles in it. And then you take this bad boy right here, 
and you roll it out. So you don't have any issues. You just got to work smart. Know what you're doing. You ain't going to have no problems. Anyway, until next time, FBSB's out. Come on.